Hi, welcome. Last few weeks we discussed about design patterns for microservices. Today I'm going to do the last video of that video series and with the microservice pattern and also two other very important factors on microservice implementation. Uh, why I am going to close this uh, design pattern series because we discussed many design patterns, we discussed best practices but we have to implement this in practical. I mean how we can create a microservice and how we can deploy this on uh, uh, docker and how we can deploy dockers onto uh, production, those type of thing. So I am going to uh, take that direction from next videos, stay tuned if you are not subscribe yet go ahead and subscribe to this channel in that case you will get notification as well as other people who interest this type of content it will help them to find this channel also if you have uh, some friends who is interested in this type of content go ahead and share in that case you can support this channel as well um, right so proxy pattern why we need this type of pattern you know what proxy is but the problem is how we can implement proxy as a pattern to microservice. Let us say you have a scenario currently they, uh, your client or your company has a monolithic application and you are going to move into uh, microservices architecture. If you are in agile uh, probably you will uh, deploy because uh, the part of microservice is continuous integration you can continuous deployment right. So, you may uh, deploy one part by part of uh, your services ultimately uh, to, de to deploy the ultimate full complete service maybe in a three months uh, down the line. Let us say when you deploy microservice continuously, uh, maybe you may need to change those uh, services. For example, uh, just assume you have a microservice to get employees uh, leave information, right? So now you pass employee ID to get uh, leave information, uh, no employee code to get uh, leave information. Let us say employee has ID and code both. But with this new restructure and everything when they restructure database they decided to keep employee ID as a relational rec uh, key for all the records. So now uh, with some time you, you need to update your service to fetch from employee ID instead of employee code right. So now if you let us say you have a uh, employee service right. So now you are going to deploy new service or new version of that. Now the your consumers already consuming your version 1 version 1 of employee service. Right. So now that consumer will pass employee code for the version 2 or the new service you need to pass employee ID. If you deploy your service into production I mean if you update your current service the meantime your consumers will break. Why? Because they do not know how to pass employee ID. So what you can do is here is the place where micro, uh, the proxy pattern will fit. So like we discussed in the previous videos aggregator services or otherwise scatter gather pattern aggregator services what you can do is you can create a separate proxy service. So that proxy service consumer will uh, like actually if you have a, that type of pattern that type of requirement like frequent updated system. Uh, services it is better with the first service itself you deploy this proxy service. I mean you ask consumers to come through the proxy service right. So in that case consumer side you do not need to change anything. Uh, now consumer invoke your proxy service we modify proxy service if consumer pass employee ID parameter go ahead and uh, talk to version 2 of employee service. If consumer pass uh, employee code go ahead and invoke version 1 of employee service right. So in that way you can independently deploy your service without disturbing to your consumer. Later on when you do not see any traffic from version uh, from with the employee code you can decommission that service 1 and you can keep version 2. Here as I said before you uh, semantic version is very important. 
it has major minor and patch versions major my major version you increment whenever your service is incompatible with previous service previous version right i mean functionality change so it is incompatible with previous version uh, minor version no increment whenever you have new functionality however the back uh, the previous functionalities will be work remain as it is that means if user wants you can user can update otherwise you user can still consume previous version patch version you can increment the way you want that doesn't matter it doesn't uh, reflect much uh, serious thing so uh, now what happens is it, with this proxy you dedicated this to services to two different version and you direct the traffic now there is a other thing involved which is a uh, service discovery right so whenever you create this service it is better you use external party to discover the service for you why because uh, in first if with the infrastructure change the host name ip addresses everything can change right so if you have a service discovery tool what you can do is you can this proxy will invoke service discovery tool and you will uh, the proxy will ask from service discovery tool hey we are the employee service version 1 right so then service discovery tool tell okay he is the version 1 ip address when it asks service 2 version 2 it will give you version 2 uh, ip address for service discovery uh, you can use something like a wso2 governance registry that has this capability and also, uh, I don't exactly remember that name. I, as I remember, it's a console, uh, console C O N S U L, as I remember. So that also has this service discovery feature. But when it comes to microservices, I'm not sure. So uh, governance registry has all other features what you are expecting to implement this type of pattern. For example, let's say uh, you are trying to get support uh, to implement your circuit breaker pattern with the uh, uh, service discovery which is not necessary but if you want you can do that but uh, I don't know uh, that will support that type of features but um, there are tools out there if you just google you can find so why service discovery is important because again your service is independent right and third thing when you like actually when you implement this uh, proxy service it's like service chaining right so consumer will call proxy, proxy will call service A as employee service version 1 or version 2. Maybe this call other services as well, right? So last video with the circuit breaker pattern, we discussed something called cascade failures, right? If one service is timing out, if some one services take long time to response, then the next service is, uh, it's affect next service to next service. Like that, it's cascading the effect. All right so uh, same time if let's say database service final service which try to database take a lot of time because database is slow right so in that case those effect is cascading through your all services to avoid that you can use message queues right so what message queue does is uh, it will store all the messages and queue processor will process one by one right one by one into database right uh, when you do that, you have to think of uh, so many things like, uh, for example, um, failures, right? Fault tolerance. If the queue fail, you will lose so many messages, right? So you have to have a redundant uh, mechanism when you implement in this type of architecture. But uh, there is a ways to do that without uh, rippling down your delays throughout other services. Um, another thing, when you're implementing proxy pattern, right? you need to pay your attention about thread pools. I have discussed this uh, concept in detail in a uh, previous video, which is a circuit breaker pattern video, uh, design pattern part two circuit breaker pattern. Go ahead and look to that video. So I explained how thread can block if you not implement proper thread pool uh, function. So either you can use uh, multiple thread pools here, or you can use thread handover mechanism like for example one thread group take the traffic from the consumer and uh, it hand over to uh, once it decide version 1 or 2 it can uh, hand over for other version 1 thread uh, group or version 2 thread group or like that in that case if either service is slow down it doesn't affect on other consumers right so you can take 
that type of approaches as well. Um, so, finally, a uh, final thing is a timeout. That is also very important. Why it is important when you when the proxy when you have a proxy service, if, let's say your version one is getting more and more delays. If you don't have a timeout implement, so that block thread can uh, affect on the version two calls as well, right? So therefore, you need to pay attention to those best practices. I would suggest go ahead and re, uh, watch about. Uh, best practice video as well as circuit breaker pattern because there I have explained this how this thread uh, pool can misbehavior and how those can cause problems on your design patterns. Right. Um, so now with that concept, I'm going to close out this design patterns video. But there are two things, two other things in the queue. Other one is what are the challenges we are facing uh, when we implement in microservices. So there I, I'm going to discuss about uh, how really we implement this, uh, what are the libraries available to implement this type of uh, timeouts or else otherwise circuit breaker patterns or, uh, or else otherwise uh, we can do multiple configuration like for example, uh, how many uh, concurrent session we allowed through our services like to protect the consumers. So there are some other cha some challenges and there are some solutions as well for those challenges. So I have other video planned for discuss those and then we are going to move into practical implementation of microservices with maybe one or two other videos. Uh, so that's it for today. Let's see you on the next video and go ahead and subscribe, share if you like. Thank you very much.